Okay, so this is big armor builds. We're talking about how to build the big giant costumes um, and how to survive in them. Trust me, the, you've seen me walking around in these big giant stilts. This costume isn't even done yet. I'm in testing because it's scary. These stilts actually used to be about 10 inches taller. That was scary. I was like, put them up, mm -mm, take them off. Uh, we'll start with, uh, first off, your concept. If you're going to build something from Halo armor to a uh, Stormtrooper to a Land Strider, whatever costume you're picking, do your research. There's, it's amazing. There's somebody out there who's probably already tried it, which will save you a lot of headache and probably killing half your projects because, yeah, research. Research is fun. Watch movies to make sure you get what it looks like correct, because it's not so much fun to be in that costume. You're so proud of it, and then somebody calls you out on one tiny little detail you never noticed. It'll happen. The worst one is the 10-year-old. We have a 10-year-old that travels with us, and she will call you out on everything, especially if you're in Star Wars. She'll call you out. Research it. Make sure you know approximately what it looks like. You may not be able to go with accurate material. Like, obviously, what is your, your uh, halo armor built out of? Uh, fiberglass. fiberglass. You think they actually have halo armor built out of fiberglass? Sometimes you got to to switch things up. You can't always build it out of metal. For one major reason, it's heavy. I have a 90-pound costume. I wear it for approximately three hours, and then I have to take it off. I'm so distracted right now. I want to make fun of you in movies. I blame that guy. That guy right there. Quit looking behind you. I'm staring right at you. It's your fault. And yours. Aww. Aww. Um, when you're building your costumes, uh, safety in your shop. Trust me, it's not so much fun to send a drill bit straight through your hand or your arm or having it shatter and have pieces flying at your face or at your friends or... Okay, that's funny. <laughs> um, shop safety. All of us have been like, I'm smart. I know what I'm doing. And then pff, there goes goes, ah. pull the drill bit out. Oh, look, my flesh. Okay. <laughs> Wrap it up. Keep going. No. Shop safety. I can't recommend it enough. Um, no matter what you're building your costume out of, um, whether it's Pepicura files, which are apparently a lot of fun, I've heard. I haven't actually quite tested that one yet. Um, Test it while you're at the house. Like, I'm testing right now. I'm in testing phases. I've put them on, I walked around my house, I had obstacles like an anvil in the middle of my floor and my chairs and four dogs. Four dogs. If you can get around four dogs, con floor is nothing. Uh, test it, see how it moves. Uh, when I first put these on, these pieces weren't wrapped. They looked just like those. After about three or four steps, it started to rub, and I started to get a nice little bruise on my leg, and I'm like, nope, need to wrap that. Uh, we bolted these in. I took, put, put them on the second time, and I pulled the shoe straight out of the screws. I said, okay, got to fix that part. Test it at your house, because it's not so much fun to, you've spent all of this time working on this big, amazing costume. You get to the con floor, you put it on, and your arms can't go higher than this. Or you can't sit down, which is always so much fun. I have, I, I have a weeping angel. I can't sit down. I used to be able to, then we put the cage in. Um, this way you also know, like, if you're walking around, I don't know, did you test yours before you put it on? A little bit. A little bit. Have, you started, have you learned how to do the armor sway yet? Watch the stormtroopers. It's funny, they'll start doing this. It's because they don't breathe. It allows air to flow through. Fans, uh, computer fans are amazing. Uh, it allows you to know, you know, if I'm moving around. Me and a friend of mine, when we built our weeping angels, we strapped on the angel wings, clean the house. If you can vacuum a floor, do the dishes, you know, everyday chores where you are actually moving, where you're moving muscles you don't realize, you're going to realize where that sucker pinches. And guys, a big one, especially with your building big armor pieces that have the uh, cod pieces, you don't want pinchage. It's funny for the rest of us to watch you, but you don't want that. Yes. So you're saying if she has Yeah, totally. She'll clean the house. So will you in armor. Um, also, uh, one of the big major things we've started running into, we live in this lovely place called Texas. Guess how hot it is outside right now? 
Somewhere between 90 and 110. How much fun is it to walk outside? There are certain costumes, I, even in on, a, on a con floor, you walk in there like, oh, it's nice and cool. Five minutes later with 2,000 people on the floor, maybe that's a really small con. 6,000 people on the floor, 30,000, 4.5 million. It gets hot. It gets hot fast. Make sure you have a way to cool yourself down. Um, biggest things in, in building armor is safety. I'm going to go through the safety part first because literally... I've worn my angel wings for since February. Last weekend we ran into the most serious issue we've had yet. I have a rib that pops out of place. I guess I turned, I breathed wrong, that rib popped and I couldn't breathe in my costume anymore. I have 25 pound angel wings in a cage. I can't sit down, I can't lay down, I couldn't put it back in. I almost ripped my costume to shreds getting it off me. I've worn it a lot and boom out of nowhere here comes this other thing. Um, I don't know, do you have a handler with you? Handlers! There's mine. Uh, if you're in big costumes, if you're a handler, raise your hand if you have any idea what that is. It's a person who's with you when you're in these big costumes because you can't sit down, you can't bend over. Sometimes uh, you need help getting into it. The handler is there to make sure you don't get, you know, somebody who comes running up and body slams you. I got glomped down a two-story escalator because I didn't have a handler with me. I thought it would be funny to tackle me down an escalator. He had three broken ribs. <laughs> I'm in full armor. <laughs> yeah, you funny. He got the three broken ribs when the uh, big giant metal skull on my knee. I have a picture of the costume he did it too. Big giant metal aluminum skull on my knee slammed into his rib cage. 90 pounds of costuming, human body. Takes about <laughs> five to 10 pounds to break a rib. Yeah, <laughs> not smart. Um, the handlers also, sometimes, I don't know, can you see behind you? Sometimes you can't see behind yourself. I have big giant angel wings. I can't exactly see them. They weigh 25 pounds. I have knocked a guy out with these suckers. Because he came right between my wings and knocked out him like my handlers did to turn me, and I went, <laughs> he went, yay. <laughs> handlers, if you're going to be in a big costume, handlers. They're also there to make you drink water. Don't think you can go out the night before and for those of y'all that are over 21, drink all night long and party and stay awake all night long and then jump into this costume and go for 24 hours. It ain't gonna happen. You will hit the floor and your lovely armor will go splat. Or maybe not, you might just you know, be a turtle in a cage. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Watching the big giant guy in the halo armor go do this number. <laughs> it's like, I can't get up. Uh, handlers are there also to help if you have an emergency like not being able to breathe or you're getting ready to pass out because it's too hot to get you out of your costume. They need to know that costume as well as you do. Um, safety things and costumes. Oh, how many of y'all have ever gone to H-E-B and seen those gel cooling packs? If you don't have fans in yours, those things are awesome. Stick them in the fridge, stick them in your cooler, shove them down your costume. It's fantastic. It'll keep you a lot cooler when you're in costumes like that. Building big armor. Anybody got a big armor build they're working on or they want to work on? What are you working on? Halo? What are you building out of? <laughs> we'll go in the red shirt, then the green. Pepakira files? What are you building yours out of? fun. Uh, sometimes you have to search pretty good for the Pepikira files. Another thing with Pepikira is when they build their files, they might build it big enough to fit him. Obviously, that's not going to fit me. When you're building Pepikira, the first thing we recommend is build your bracer. It's going to be the best way to figure out if it's going to be sized to fit you, or if you need to size it up, or if you need to size it down. Um, are you building out of foam, or starting with paper? Uh, paper. What about yours? Paper. Paper. Um, when you're resining them, resin the inside. Because I've seen a lot of people, they resin the outside and then they lose all of their detail. How did you build yours? Fabricura? Yeah, resin the inside. Don't put the helmet on for at least 24 hours because you'll be like, hey, this is wonderful. <laughs> Unfortunately, weeping angel, bodysuit, spray paint. Fun. Mask, can't breathe. Yay. Um, 
This way you can keep a lot of your details. And you'll, a, a couple of layers is good. Test it. It's not so much fun to wear that armor for the first time and 30 seconds later you break a piece of it. It's better to break it at home when you can still repair it. Um, also, don't rush when you're building. Take your time. If you need to delay it for another month so you can get it the way you want it to, delay it for a month. Yeah, you missed the con you wanted to premiere it at. I got jumped up two months on this costume. It wasn't supposed to be done till October. Now it has to be done in August. I love my boss. <laughs> She's building the costume. Because I'm not doing it. I'm just going to wear it and be like, I'm dying. Um, helmets are another big thing. Um, do you have fans in your helmet? Yeah, some of them you'll be able to fit. Uh, some of the stormtroopers have uh, two computer fans. They're relatively small. One coming in, one going out. It'll make it so you can breathe. You can't hear for snot anyways, so it's okay. Um, anybody doing, like, vacuum forming? Nobody vacuum forms. Awesome. We're getting a vacuum form machine. I'm so excited. I think there's a guy over there. What's that? Green shirt. With what? If you got them, use them. Use whatever resources you have. Um, I don't have a laser printer. I have a regular industrial size copier that I print everything on. Um, literally test it. Research, I'm like about 30 to 40 hours of researching into this costume and about five, six hours into just testing. And I've still got probably a good another 100 hours before I even fully bring this costume out and bring it to life. I've got a 10 year old who's going to be on my back. Lots of testing involved. Because I need to make sure I'm strong enough to walk around in this costume and strong enough to carry her on my back without causing both of us a hazard. Um, who else is building what? Yes, in the blue. High five, same here. Mark 42, I'm buying pepper pots in the Mark 42. I'm excited. Dude, I've got costuming planned out for 2016. That's bad. I need to quit drinking and watching movies. <laughs> no, because then things like this come out like, dude, that'd be fun. That'd be awesome. Let's do it. Okay. I don't know where half of you are like, I want to do that. It looks cool. Halfway through, you're like, why? Um, hardware stores are your best friend. You'd be amazed. It, sometimes, you know, you, it's a choice of time and money. You can go the cheaper route, but it's going to cost you more time. Or you can have somebody else build it, and it's going to cost you more money. It really depends on where you want to go with it. If you don't know how to build a certain piece, um, search online. Costumes are happy. I am happy to sit there, and I will pull my wing harness off and show you how I did it and break it down and how we built the wings to how we built the stilts. Um, find somebody who built... I don't know, are you willing to talk to people about how you built your stuff? There you go, right there. There's your guy. He already built it. I'm pretty sure he knows a lot. Like, cure times. I'm going to talk about cure times because I did this and it was horrible. Flash, um, flash burning your costuming. Um, how many of y'all have ever actually worked with something called Bondo? It's a body filler. Have you ever actually felt it as it's actually drying? It gets really hot. Have you ever worked with resin? Resin gets really hot. If you don't let your Bondo cure completely and you start adding resin, they both get hot and then you flash burn your project. So this project you're 30, 40 hours into, you just torched. And you want to cry. And you probably will cry if you're like me and you've just spent 40 hours building a set of wings and you just torch one of them. Um, cure times. Read the label. I know it's like, I've worked with this a hundred times. I still read the label because they change things and never tell you on certain products. If it says 24 hours for cure time, at least 24 hours. I will sometimes let mine sit for 48. Um, cure times can also fluctuate depending on temperature. Whether you're working outside, working in your house, working in your garage, which I recommend because you can control the elements. Be careful with working in your house because fumes are 
interesting. And though you may not smell them after five minutes, your roommate who walks in goes, why are you high? And you're like, spray paint. <laughs> My boss is one of the worst. I'll get a phone call like, hey, you've been spray painting. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Make sure you're well ventilated or you're wearing a rebreather. I finally invested in one. Shop safety. Shush, it came up with great costuming ideas, I think. I don't know. I'm afraid. Um, give yourself plenty of time to dry. It's going to take longer. Yeah, and I know if you're like me, I'm impatient. I want to get this built. I want to get it on. I want to be like, yeah, look at what I did. It's awesome. It's not so much fun if you don't cure test it. And a friend of mine, my wings weigh 25 pounds because I have two gallons of resin on them. She doesn't have any resin. Guess what happened to her wings? They separated. Um, the, also, make sure if, before you even, like, if you're going to put Bondo on a certain object, small tests. See how those two objects react with each other. We found out the hard way that Bondo and insulation foam, Bondo eats insulation foam. Do you know how you stop that from happening? Wood glue. Put a layer of wood glue down. Let it dry. Sticks perfectly fine. Um, if you're going to be gluing stuff, there's an amazing website called thistothat.com. It is amazing. It'll tell you how to, like, duct tape a baby to a wall. <laughs> you go in, it tells, it's got two little panels that say, I'm going to put plastic on metal. And then you click search, and it'll send you a whole bunch of lists of, of glues that you could use to stick plastic on metal or baby on a wall. or <laughs> Duct tape works the best. when your roommate's sleeping and they don't pay attention and you duct tape them upside down. <laughs> you want to get that? Yeah. I make fun of him way too much and he's the one who keeps me alive in my costumes. <laughs> I'm going to regret this one day because you're going to be like, I'm going to, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, this to that dot com. I told you I'm scatterbrained right now. <laughs> I usually have this piece of paper that tells me everything I need to know. Guess where that is? Who knows? Um, probably in the middle, like probably somewhere in the midst of this costume, I used it for like sketching out something. That was fun. YouTube video. Dude, there's a YouTube video for everything. Seriously, if you can't find it online, search YouTube. Just make sure it's YouTube and not one of the other sites. Because totally different stuff comes up. If you understand what I'm talking about, there's somebody next to you that doesn't, I'm not explaining. <laughs> um, make sure your mediums will work together. It's not quite so, so much fun if I would have glued this together and took my first step and then all my glue breaks. Also, when you're traveling with costumes, once again, Texas heat, guess what happens to plastic in Texas? You know how many Nerf guns I have melted to my car seats? Not just like disformed, I mean totally fused to my leather car seats. Uh huh. It's funny, you're like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. No. 100 degree weather plus costume. Make sure you're not leaving your costumes in the car. I'm the worst at that. My costume maker has been sitting in my car for two weeks because I'm lazy. A little longer than that, I think. A couple months. Okay, a couple months. No, it came in the house for like five minutes. A repair piece. Shush. <laughs> you're supposed to keep me. You're supposed to be my handler and make me sure I'm doing the right stuff, not letting me get away with this. I make sure you don't die. Yeah, well, making my costumes work will make me sure I don't die. Um, I do. My brain died. Where was I? <laughs> oh yeah, costuming in the heat. Um, oh. Make sure you know how your costume reacts to heat and cold. Uh, especially the materials you're using. Uh, spray paint is a big one. How many of y'all have ever tried to spray paint in like 50 degree weather? How long does it take to dry? You know why? Spray paint doesn't like 50 degree weather. It likes somewhere between 70 and 90. Also, if spray paint can't get too hot, guess what happens? They will explode. And then you have spray paint everywhere. I'm taking that away from you. Here, you can talk to your girlfriend later. She'll understand. I don't, then you can talk to your boyfriend later. I don't care. 
<laughs> you set that one up, not me. Um, spray paint. How many of you have ever seen the, the, they have this lovely thing called Krylon Fusion. Anybody know what it's used for? It, it's, it, it's supposed to be for spray painting on plastic. You know what the difference between Krylon Fusion or Rust-Oleum Fusion or whatever the name of that one is and the regular spray paint is? About two bucks. If you flip them around, you look at the active ingredients in both, it's the same. Um, if you're spray painting something like PVC or plastic of any kind, take it, stick it in your bathtub. Make sure you don't have it attached to whatever it is. Give it a nice light scrub with like a Dawn dish soap and uh, an SOS sponge. Because when they're doing PVC like this or any kind of plastic, uh, they put this resin on it to help release it from the mold. That's what causes spray paint to not want to stick to it. You scrub that off, spray paint sticks easy. Couple of coats, clear coat, clear coat, clear coat, more clear coat. If you've got the money for it, automotive paint, it's fantastic. I'm cheap. Spray paint. Um, test in small portions. Can't reiterate that one. Else. Test in small portions. If you're going to glue plastic to whatever, make sure it's not going to, you know, burn your project. Um, some things. Also, if you're going to work with stuff like, you know, E6000 or 9001, whatever you're gluing to wherever it is you're gluing it to, make sure it's where you want it. Some of those glue, you cannot get off of the jackhammer. You'll get everything else off your project, but that one little piece will still be stuck together. It will never come back off. It takes a lot longer to cure, like 24 hours, but it is not moving after that one. Um, is your armor rigged with a harness? Or is it just sitting on your shoulders? Okay. Some of them you'll rig in a harness system. Uh, the stormtroopers are the weirdest one if you ever actually get a chance to look at their armor. This is the most weirdest looking harness system ever. I'm a fan of harness systems because it allows me to modify certain pieces, make sure they hang a certain way. Um, is yours padded underneath or is it just digging into your shoulders? Padding. Camp foam. The greatest thing ever. It's cheap. It's easy to cut. You can form it to whatever shape you need it. Trust me, when you've got this armor that you think, oh, it's lightweight, I can wear this, you wear it for the first time for the first hour, you're fine. About hour two, your arms start to hurt. When you take it off, we found this the hard way with the angels. It's not so much fun to wake up the next day and have a bruise the size of a baseball in your shoulder. And you're like, I don't want to move. It hurts. Um, padding in your armors. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to Red Fair. I'm a medieval armorer myself. I've worn the Black Knight armor. The padding system under there is fantastic, especially if you're going to wear it and move around. Once again, Test it. Put it on, walk around, see where it pinches. It might be, you know, everything fits fine except for this one shoulder piece pinches in the underarm. So you got to slide it out a little bit more. Um, any other builds? Nobody's building anything? Hmm? Good job with that. Bioshock is fun. We have a little sister. It's really, it's the 10 year old child. You, if, if you get to know her, you're like, dang it, I can't harvest them anymore. <laughs> Every time I see them, I think of her. Die. die, die, die. <laughs> I can't say that. That's a mini me. I am apparently her idol. I don't know why. Don't do this. Um, yes, green. with your wiring system. Yeah. Um, I prefer closed housing, AKA my wires aren't gonna be anywhere near my skin. This way, if one does pull loose, I'm not shocking the snot out of myself. Cause like um, I have seen people do it both ways. I've seen people actually run their wiring through their armor. They actually put housing in there. I've also seen people run underneath it and actually have closed circuit housing underneath it. I actually run underneath mine. This way it's easier if I pull a wire for me to rewire my suit 
and not have to rip apart my entire arm piece to get to... I build robots, too. This is so much fun. You, that one wire that rips is the one you can't get to until you disassemble the whole thing. I run underneath this way. You know, let's say I pull this wire up here. I can take this one piece off, restring that wire, put it back together, and put it back on. I typically run a wire for each individual part. This way, you know, if this part stops working, I know it's that wire. Instead of it's, this one doesn't work, it's one of these eight gajillion pieces in here. Which, more testing, figuring it out, getting frustrated, throwing it across the room. Occasionally the shotgun comes out and goes boom, boom, boom. <laughs> then you start over. I'm, I'm a Texas girl, I can't help myself. That's what you do with broken TVs. Go out in the back and play target practice. Then you rip the TV apart and use the capacitors to do other things. <laughs> costuming. Everything is costuming. I have like eight dead computers that are eventually going to become a cyberpunk outfit. Why? Because it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> uh, another thing is, and I have to tell this, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Case in point, this particular character has a flamethrower on their arm. Can you guess where this is going? Yeah. Well, he had a friend of mine, um, the character he was doing had a flamethrower on his arm, so he built a working flamethrower. And in the middle of a panel, they were talking about it, he was like, yeah, I thought. So his entire panel took a field trip outside, and he demonstrated shooting these eight-foot flames into the air. One of them happened to be an off-duty, uh, what is it, ATX officer? A ATF officer? ATF. ATF officer. He goes, so it works, yeah? Why are you carrying a weapon of mass destruction? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Where did you, not that, across state lines. I have no idea what you're talking about. It doesn't work. <laughs> Just taking pieces off and throwing it. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Don't build a working flamethrower. Don't build bottle rockets into it that are going to shoot off. I work con safety, too, at most conventions I go to. It makes me unhappy. Um, another one, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, how many of y'all have ever seen, like, uh, Assassin's Creed? The Blades? I got a couple of stories with those. A guy who didn't pin it right and did this, and chink. Bye-bye fingertips. Um, don't, 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 even if the con allows it, don't put working blades of any kind. Live steel is bad. We had a guy who had a beautiful set of armor. Blades coming off his elbows. Not sheathed, not plastic wraps, nothing. I was walking over to say, hey, nice costume. He turned. I got the blade. I got to see a nice, he filleted my arm. And I went, <laughs> blood went, <laughs> I went, you're coming with me. <laughs> Let's go. It hurts. It's not fun. Um, yeah, it looks cool and great. Um, you can build a lot of things that look like metal without them actually being metal. Plastic, wood, you work on it hard enough, you figure it out, you watch enough YouTube videos, you can figure it out. Um, I know it's fun to build the full suit of metal armor. How many of y'all have ever seen the knights that are, are at a Ren Faire actually in their armor for more than 15 minutes? I've been in one for an hour and a half. I didn't move the next day. It hurt. It's heavy. Um, how, about, how heavy is your armor? You never weighed it? You got an approximate guess? 40 pounds? Weigh your armor. It's so much fun to be like, I'm wearing 50 pounds of armor right now. <laughs> I'm a badass. <laughs> I have a costume that weighs 90 pounds. It's almost more than I weigh. Actually, it is more than I weigh when I actually add all the hammers and the shields and the chains and the... I'm going to make that costume weigh more than I do. Just for soul bragging rights. <laughs> I'm going to hate myself in the morning, but I'm going to do it. Um, drink, lots of water. drink lots of water. Water, Gatorade. Don't think I can get away with drinking soda and five-hour energy shots, and then <laughs> drink a bottle of water and be safe to get in a costume. While you're in the costume, drink lots of water. Um, drink lots of water beforehand. Eat. You have to eat. Especially ladies, I don't know about y'all, I wear big giant wings. Most of my wings go into a corset system because I hate all the weight on my shoulders. You're in a corset with 25-pound wings on your back, and you don't eat, and you don't drink water all day, 
Guess what happens? You faceplant and your wings get destroyed. Or you unfortunately faceplant on unsuspecting con goers. <laughs> that one wasn't me. I have yet to faceplant in my costume. I want to do that a lot. There's going to be like these knuckle prints right here. By the time I'm done. Um, stilts. That's another one thing I'm pretty good at. I wear jump stilts in half of my costumes. Peg stilts. I'm getting painter stilts. They're fun. Um, before you costume on top of your stilts, or if you're going to be um, in any kind of rise or any kind of thing whatsoever, whatever your skeletal system is, if you're going to build a harness system or stilts or anything, put it on. Test it. Make sure you're comfortable in it before you actually build all the costuming on it and can't get back to that piece. Um, I actually have these here, and I was actually down on the con floor, and then people were like, oh, what's the costume going to be? Can we see it later? I'm like, it's not done yet. I'm literally testing right now. I have these on on the con floor so I can see how I move in them. Can I get out of the way of the person who's not paying attention to me and getting ready to walk into me? Can, because I'm not going to be able to see. I'm going to be able to see about this much when I get in this costume which is where he comes in. He's my eyes. Can you see out of your helmet very well? Yeah? yeah? You got full view of everything? Okay, well, yeah, yeah, the Halo armor, you got the big giant visors you can put in. Some of the ones I wear, you get like this much. Weeping Angels. Weeping Angels is the worst. I've got a bodysuit, and then I've got a mask that has blacked out eyes. In a dark room, I'm blind. In this room, it's like in a dark room. <laughs> Full lights, and I'm like, I can't see. Oh, there's a person, sorry. <laughs> Especially when you have the 10-year-old who stops right in front of you and you can't see anything below here. That's fun. Um, if you have kids, dude, get them the costume now. They'll have all the skills to build you your costuming later, and they'll have fun with it. And be like, hey, you want to build a costume? Awesome. Let's build this. You're going to build all of it. <laughs> I just get the, the repercussions of, you know, time and money. Um, anybody else building anything? Plastic, metal, wood, foam, paper? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, if you're going to be wearing stuff like his... I'm pretty, you have a full suit underneath that, don't you? Yeah, yeah I got a bodysuit underneath it. Trust me, plastic plus skin plus moving parts equals pinchy pinchy. And trust me, it's really funny watching that guy on the, you'll watch him. Find the people downstairs who didn't test their costumes, it's easy to spot. They're the ones walking like something is somewhere it's not supposed to be. <laughs> it's really funny, you're like, you didn't test your costume, and that's pinching something it's not supposed to. Yes? I don't have dignity or pride anymore. <laughs> I, I've, I've actually, uh, usually the person who's with me, um, her name is Shannon McCarthy. She's the other weeping angel. If you ever get to see us at a con, it's really cool looking. Um, she's a tall one. She's uh, six feet tall. It's funny. You go, to the, you go to the bathroom right before you get in that costume. I don't care if you went five minutes before, ten minutes before, half an hour. Go right before you start putting that costume on. And sometimes you have to have your handler strip you out of costuming so you can go. It, it's kind of bad. I've I, unfortunately I have one of my I have another female handler who has actually gone with me into the bathroom because <laughs> yeah I have no more dignity or pride. You lose a lot of that when you're in these big costumes. The funniest jump stilts. It sounded like something was dying in the bathroom because the jump stilts are banging. <laughs> when you're 20 inches tall, the toilet seat's like your butt's up here. It's way down here, and you're like. <laughs> I'm just lucky nobody else was in the bathroom and it was funny <laughs> I fell over laughing yeah you you can try to build contingency plans how easy is it for you to go to the bathroom in that or is it just a no go yeah if you can make it to where you can take the lower half off of your costume go for it once again make sure Dude, test it in your own bathroom. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It is funny watching people going, I gotta go to the bathroom. You can tell. They're like, I gotta go. Gotta go. And they can't do anything about it. You know, those kind of 
Don't wait for the last possible second. If you gotta go, get that armor off and go. Because it's really funny watching that one person who has waited till the absolute last possible second. And then they're like rushing to get their armor off and when you rush to get your armor off, guess what happens? You break it, it doesn't come off, stuff gets jammed, you're like, I want to get this off! It's funny. Um, the incident with my jump stilts, I had a dress on. I had a wedding dress on, on jump stilts. We stripped that sucker down in the middle of the con floor. Make sure, also, um, undergarming. Don't expect to put your costume on and nothing but your bra and underwear. When you, for whatever reason, you're overheating, make sure you can strip that whole costume off on a con floor and you're not indecent. I always have on what are called spanky shorts. I'm a dancer. They're black shorts and a black tank top. That is always the base garbing for whenever I start my costuming. Doesn't matter what costume it is. This way, if need be, I can strip down my costume on the con floor if, you know, I break a stilt or I pop a rib out of place or for some reason my armor shifts and I stab myself on the side with it. It happens. Plan for the unexpected, and it's going to happen anyways. Just not what you were expecting it was going to do. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law. Murphy hates costumers. <laughs> I'm going to warn you now, Murphy hates costumers. Um... Wow, I still have like 25 minutes. Jimmy, many Christmas? Oh. Don't. You've got a mic. You can say stuff yourself. Yeah, but I only know. Come on, hand it Yes. Up. Eventually. We're working on that. We're going to build him a spirit walker. We're going to have three of us in these riggings eventually as spirit walkers. I get my jump stilts next week. I'm totally going to kick you off those things. <laughs> I'm just going to walk up and be like, <laughs> see, it's funny. It's just because I wouldn't let you touch mine. Yes, person with their hand up. The guy I was making fun of. <laughs> I'm going to call you sunshine. <laughs> oh, totally. What happens at con stays on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, and if you think your coworkers aren't ever gonna see it, you're wrong. <laughs> My coworkers would just think I'm weird. Prepare to face plan, especially because I know you. You're gonna try to start running on them in instantly. You gotta learn to walk before you can run, before you can back flip over the car. Face plan at 20 miles an hour. I figured I was gonna try the car second before I tried walking. I'm laughing at you. You're gonna take that first step and you're gonna face plan. I'm going to make sure you're right in the middle of the street when you do it, too. Yeah, <laughs> Concrete! Uh, Say what? Depends on the costume. Our Weeping Angels were actually a challenge to do an epic costume on a small budget. hundred bucks. I've actually got pictures of them. I don't know if any of y'all are on the Doctor Who uh, fan page. Uh, have you ever seen the picture of the Dalek that's actually like shooting the, the companion, like three doctors and there's two angels? <laughs> I'm the angel that's flying. It's funny to watch all those comments. Um, like I said, it's time versus money. Uh, this costume, you know how much these stilts cost me? About 20 bucks. Actually, about 30 because I would bought brand new tennis shoes because I was, couldn't find mine. There's a reason to keep your old tennis shoes around. Cheap Walmart. Um, cheapo Walmart shoes. 10 bucks. Easy. Um... If you're willing to spend the time, it's not going to cost you much money. This entire costume is about going to be $200, and most of it is going to be in foam because I've got to build up body parts I don't have, like shoulders that are like this big. Um, it, it really is time versus money. You can either put a whole bunch of money into a costume. I'm building a Boba Fett armor. It's going to cost me about $6,000. You know why? Because of some of the pieces they put in there. The 501st, I have so much respect for these guys, and you'll understand why. Um, have you ever seen Boba Fett? Have you ever noticed the fact that there's a computer chip in the back of the helmet? Some of the missiles are from, like, a, there's a, a plate on the wrist. It's from a 1970 calculator. You have to have that calculator to enter the 501st. You have to have specific things from specific things that we can't really find anymore in these costumes. There's a check mark in the helmet. 
you have to have. I didn't realize this. Story. I started talking to a friend of mine in the 501st who does Boba Fett, and I'm like, you what? And I was like, I think it's going to cost me about $1,000. It's six, about a $6,000 costume build. You can do it cheap, or you can do it like screen accurate movie wise. How much did your armor cost you? Fans. Hey, the, the more you, the more, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show you a costume that currently right now is sitting at about $10,000 with work. No, I'm, I've got a $10,000 costume. I have my Angel of Praise at $3,000. Cost me about 100 Appraise your costumes, get them insured. The other set of, the other angel, um, they got into a car wreck, destroyed her wings. Insurance paid for it. Insurance paid out to have those wings rebuilt. I rec and if you're going to build a costume and it's going to be big and it's going to be time consuming and do insure it. It is the worst possible thing in the world to, you know, house fire and yeah, you lose everything, but you lost this project you've been working on and put all this stuff into. Especially because people steal the weirdest things out of cars. I had a guy try to walk off with my demon wings. They're a unique one-of-a-kind piece. Nobody else is going to have those but me. And he tried to walk off with them in front of me. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> Get back here. Guy in the blue shirt. If, so, if I'm going to con and they want to fly me, they're paying to f and they want a certain costume, they're going to ship my costume. Um, if you're going to fly with a costume, um, I recommend shipping it uh, and make sure it's padded to all get out and back. Most of the time, I'm in Texas. I travel all over Texas. I have an SUV for a reason because it's big costumes. I take up the entire back of my car with three costumes. Mm -hmm. You get a really big, awkward-looking box. <laughs> Dude, they make boxes in all shapes and sizes. My jump stilt box that my jump stilts came in actually fit my D-Moon wings. That's not the one we threw away, is it? Yeah, that's the one we just threw away. <laughs> that's okay. Right. They make boxes in all shapes and sizes. And you might spend a little bit of extra money buying, like, newspaper or, or foam padding to ship them. But if you want to ship a big costume, you're going to find a way to pad it and ship it. And I try to pack all of my costumes in uh, Foot Locker trunks. You want to watch the people, like, uh, if you can, get the priority boxes. Oh, they hate you. <laughs> they hate that one flat rate, no matter how much it weighs. <laughs> they hate me. I walk in with the footlocker trunk. They're like, why? How much does this one weigh? About 200 pounds. <laughs> why? How many costumes are in there? Half of one. <laughs> the other one I have to go get out of the car. Yeah. Good starter project for a costume? Yeah. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> if you're going to start on a project, make sure it's something you really want to do. Um, my first costume I ever built, I don't even remember. The first big major one I built was actually my god mode armor. And I'm still, it actually just got brought out of retire two weeks ago. Because that sucker's heavy. And I've been working on it for about 15 years. Um, some costumes, it's a labor of love. You build a piece. You build the next piece. It might take you a year to build this costume, but it's going to look fantastic when you're done. In the back? Under Armour. Oh, yeah. That stuff is fantastic. And it's comfortable. What do you mean my rules on stilts? Have fun? Don't kill yourself? Don't kill your neighbor? <laughs> when I first built this pair, this pillar was 30 inches tall. I scared the snot out of myself putting those things on. So we chopped them down to, 10 in, to 20. Because 20 inches is what my jump stilts sit at, and I'm comfortable on 20. Um, if you're going to build peg stilts like this, I recommend building taller and cutting shorter until you get to your comfort level. Because it's easier to go shorter than it is to go taller. Um, also, like when you're cutting anything, I'm pretty sure if you're a builder of any kind, measure, 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 remeasure, measure again, and then cut once. Like measure twice, cut once, or something like that. 
I measure it like six or seven times. Because it's amazing how often that tape measured apparently isn't 10 inches where it says 10 inches. Green again. Yeah. I measure them individually each time. Because I, I might be in this stilt, I'm going to probably work out muscles I don't normally work out in my jump stilts. I'm going to, I've got to be doing push-ups and arm, shoulder, shoulder press. Shoulder presses, because I'm going to have a 10-year-old, 90-pound child on my shoulders. Um, every time you do it, your arms are going to change. So make sure that if you have, you know, it's not a piece that's going to fit every time. Make sure you can sometimes adjust it. Because also, what you're wearing underneath it makes a big difference. From blue jeans to uh, dance pants, there's a difference in there you don't realize. Um, makes a big difference what you're wearing underneath it. You know, baggy pants to guys, I know sometimes when you're wearing armor, you're not going to like it, but tight pants are sometimes good. Compression shorts, make sure everything stays where you want it to stay. You don't have movement. Movement's not good underneath armor. Things move where you don't want them to. It's funny for me, because I get to watch you go, oh, God! <laughs> it's really funny, because they make this high-pitched squeal, and they face plant, and then they curl up in the fetal position. And then you sit there going, hee, hee, hee. <laughs> I'll help you when I finish laughing. We had a friend of mine tried who decided to skip the entire testing process. Yeah, I laughed for about half an hour before I could get back up. He pinched something not quite so pleasant. Over there in the sunglasses are up. I can't tell. Hi. Um, I haven't run into copyright yet, but if it's something that's potential, like, when you're building a costume, it's okay until you start trying to sell it. It's selling that copyright comes in play. Um, I can build this Landstrider all day long. Can I sell you a Landstrider costume? No. Can I sell you stilts and a Spirit Walker costume? Yes. I can't sell it as a Landstrider. I can sell you stilts. I can sell you parts of this weird costume, but I cannot actually market and sell a Landstrider costume. Um, that's why uh, usually the 501st, the dented helmet, if you're ever building helmets or anything, any kind of bucket for anything, buckets the helmet, dented helmet, fantastic. Those guys are awesome about, you know, hey, I use this. I found out that this works here. Everybody makes mistakes. If you're, if you're building something for the first time and you run into something you've never seen before and it does this weird thing, dude, tell somebody. We all do it eventually. It's, you know, they might have an idea, oh, this kind of harness system worked really well for me, but I had to modify this or, you know, I had to do this because of that, blah, blah, blah. Also, in your shoes, insoles. When you add armor, you're adding weight, and you're adding weight like... I have bad knees, and yet I get on stilts for some ungodly reason. Knee braces, ankle braces. Make sure that if you have, you know, a knee that likes to go that way when it's supposed to go that way, you brace accordingly. Because trust me, it's not fun to have your knee buckle and you go down in your entire costume. Not fun for you, not fun for the person you just landed on either. No funny for the rest of us. Yes? That is up to you. Uh, your mobility versus screen accurate and, and able to move. I've seen a lot of beautiful um, Transformer costumes. They walk around like this because they can't move. And they're beautiful costumes, but I don't think I could do that. I like moving. I mean, I'm jumping around on, on peg stilts. Probably going to plant on my butt eventually, but... Um, really, that's up to you. Do you want to how screen accurate do you want to get versus comfort versus your ability to stay in it? My weeping angel has a three-hour hard limit. Three hours. I don't care what I'm doing. I could be in the middle of a photo shoot. I could be in the middle of a costume contest. That sucker comes off. Boom! Right there. You went five hours of last yes, and I'm still paying for that. I went five hours of the last kind. Still paying for it. Um, also. Um, I don't know why somebody decided to do this, but it's apparently circulating. Do not put food coloring in your eyes. This is a side note. We've seen people do this. Do not put food coloring in your eyes. Yeah, your eyes are watering just thinking about it, isn't it? 
Um, if you're gonna, if your character has yellow eyes, invest in yellow contacts. If you can't, sometimes you gotta skimp on a couple of details be because it's unsafe. Um, the worst weapons I ever see are the Sephiroth swords. Um, your props are really annoying. Make sure when you're making your props uh, or something you're going to be carrying. Remember, you're going to be carrying this on a con floor where it's busy and there's a lot of people. That's where all the handlers come in handy. Can you be like, here, hold this. Um, mobility, if it's a multi-story con. I've unfortunately been at a couple that the elevators have gone out. And you're stuck on a floor, but you got to get up to the third floor because that's where your next panel is, but you're in stilts. So, yeah, escalators are fun on stilts <laughs> and scary to boot. Um, make sure, like, if you're going to be in the convention hall, there's probably going to be elevators. How can you go from floor to floor? Can you go to the bathroom in your, conven in your costume? Can you sit down? Um... Are you going to be in this costume for three hours and then take it off and take a break and then put it back on again later? Sometimes you're like, I don't want to put that back on. I have to, but I don't want to. Um, figure out what you're comfortable doing. You know, is it going to be super hot? If it's super hot, I won't put on half my costumes. They're not built for summertime. Yay, ten minutes! Hi, lady in the back! Are you entertained? Are we not entertaining? <laughs> Sorry. Do you know what movie that's from? <laughs> oh my god. I might, and I just not, don't remember. Dude, I made a, a, a Ghostbuster reference the other day. It was perfect, and he was like, what? Um, yeah, so it's, it's mostly what you're comfortable doing. Do you want to stay true to the movie? Which is so annoying. Uh, we're building... How many of y'all have seen Hellboy 2? The Death Angel? You know how much those wings weighed? Ten pounds, and they're on a, a, a rig system. This is a challenge from Doug Jones himself. I hate that guy. The guy who made it actually challenged my boss to make it and make it 3D wearable. <laughs> I hate her. I'm not wearing it. She is. Um, because what you don't realize is in movies, sometimes they have a lot of their costumes rigged up in ways you can't see. Like, they're giant wings that look amazing, and these big, giant, heavy costumes are on wire systems suspended from the ceiling. Um, my fun one is we're building Catwoman out of PVC. They had 84 of that costume, because PV PVC vinyl rips. They had 84 versions of that costume, because it kept ripping. We have to build one that won't rip. I'm I'm going easy. I get to be poison ivy. Bodysuit, leotard, pff, done. <laughs> Easiest costume build yet. Not leaves. So many leaves. <laughs> you think it sometimes I'm like, okay, this is where the research part comes in. If you start when you start researching your costume, the Gelfling from Dark Crystal. Looks like a simple costume, right? <laughs> you don't see how many leaves are on that sucker. <laughs> We have cut, burnt, and tea dyed 400 leaves. <laughs> easy costume, right? <laughs> this is an easy costume. This is where research comes in. Also, it, you, know, you might be like, I want to build this costume. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be awesome. Halfway through your research, you're like, uh-uh. Nope. I don't want to build it. It's just too hard for me. Uh, push your limitations on your costuming. Push it. Push it as far as you can go. If you don't know how to do something, dude, hop online. Hop on a convention forum of what you're going to. There's somebody out there that's probably done it or knows or find me. Search God Mode, all one word. You'll find me online. Be like, hey, I'm building this. Any ideas? I don't know how to do that, but here, talk to this person. Um, uh, if you ever get to meet yeah, the Houston area fallout, um, George, one of the main guys there, amazing costumer. Pick his brain. Pick it to pieces. Find a person who's built the costume you're trying to build, or somebody who's built something close to the costume you're trying to build. Pick their brain. They might know, you know, hey, you know, if you buy this kind of PVC versus this kind of PV whatever, it works a lot better. Oh, you want to use, you know, thicker stuff here, but lighter stuff here, because this part right here takes a lot of strain you're not used to. Um, talk to people, seriously. I've built 
This is the first pair of stilts I've ever actually built. I've been on 50 gajillion pairs of stilts. I've never actually built my first pair. It's so much fun. <laughs> I'm building more. I built this pair off of a, a YouTube video I found. DIY stilts. What they don't show you in the video that we found out the hard way? <laughs> there are certain measurements that need to be done first. Certain holes that have to be drilled first. Like this one. Just make sure everything lines up right. Otherwise you got one piece here and one piece here and one piece down here and they're all supposed to be level. Um, sometimes you have to scrap a project and start over, but it's a learning experience. Somewhere, something, and we've all trashed projects. You haven't because you don't build anything. The energy hidden. I'm just, I'm going to make you run behind the car. I'll scrap your energy. Five minutes, yes. You got five minutes. <laughs> I unfortunately know people that do Hollywood costuming. Um, take it to co take it to costumers that you meet at conventions. Have somebody you know. If, if you it's always fails, how much you spend on materials? How much do you value? How much time did you spend on it? And then appraise your time. I'm an expensive costumer. I'm a twenty dollar an hour costumer. That's how I appraise costuming. Um. That's how I appraise almost everything, from the chain mail I build to the leather products to the costumes. How much did the materials cost me? How much did I, how much time did I spend on it? And if you detail this out and you take it to them, be like, hey, insurance people, this is what I want to do. I have this costume. Do not tell them you're going to rent it out to somebody, because then they automatically nix it. I've never rented my costumes out, but I learned that one from my lovely, lovely insurance people. Um, and it goes under some weird thing. Talk to your insurance people. They're usually pretty good about it. Mine actually goes under both my car insurance and my home insurance. Yeah, my insurance people hate me. <laughs> Especially with how expensive some of my costumes can get. Um, dude, seriously, stop it! Or go run around in the back like a small child. Sure. <laughs> You can run to Galveston. How about that? No. Yeah. Questions, comments, concerns, heckling? Yes. I'm a mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that is my job title. I teach children science. So like, so like you're a, like a I'm a science teacher. That's my background on this. No, actually, I teach science. I teach them how to blow stuff up. <laughs> Uh, the lady I work with, uh, she used to build uh, mascots. Um, I just, I started playing dress up when I was little and my mom never told me to stop. It's basically how it is. I've just, I get on the internet and start searching stuff and be like, ooh, this looks cool, let's try that. So the costuming is yeah, this is my weekend fun stuff. You find something you think is cool and you want to put it on and act like an idiot. It is so much fun. The Weeping Angels are the greatest thing ever. You know why? You have no personal bubble with us. I will get up right in your ear or right up behind you and freak you out. <laughs> it is the worst thing ever. It's so much fun. He's seen us do it. People wig out. They're like, ah! Yes. <laughs> Where's my husband when I need him? I, I am not the metal worker. That is actually my husband. Um, for building an actual forge, that one you're going to need to do a lot of research on because a lot of things can go wrong with that one. Um, for most of the basic things you need, you can go to Harbor Freight, the poor man's Home Depot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Drill presses are your friend. I just got to use it this weekend. Dude, drill presses are awesome. <laughs> I love power tools. <laughs> A drill. <laughs> I l dremels. Drills and dremels and power sanders. Oh my god, power sanders. <laughs> if you're building anything with wood or PVC or plastic, power sander. Or just trying to scratch an inch. <laughs> yeah, or trying to scratch an inch when somebody tells me I can't scratch it anymore. <laughs> Sand it. <laughs> I'm not scratching it. 
Are you raising your gun? Is that your hand? Are you just holding it there like, look at me? Okay. I acknowledge your presence. <laughs> yes? Home Depot. That is my materials. My Home Depot has, has just started asking, they don't ask me what home improvement project I'm working on. They're like, oh, so what costume is this? You use a lot of leather. I use a lot of leather. Leather is my, I will hook everything with leather. And chainmail. And chain mail. <laughs> then again, I like leather and chainmail. What's up? Rivets. Lots of rivets. Uh, if you're going to start working leather, go to Tandy's Leather. Be like, hey, I want to do this. Teach me. They have a lot of classes. They're really cool people, to, especially here in Austin. Um, be like, hey, I'm doing this for the first time. Tell me. Two minutes. One minute. One minute. OK. Pepicura, resin. PVC. Um, what is that plastic? You need a vacuum form and really want to do jump kicks in that stuff? You're going to pinch something fierce. <laughs> I want video of the first time they try this. <laughs> Not like after their test runs. I want the very first test run. I expect it on YouTube. Dude, seriously, right? it's just stupid costumers. <laughs> Look at this idiot. It's funny. It's funny watching people for the first time when they get up in their costumes. You know, me yesterday on those, I'm like, yeah. If you, I think we're done here, unfortunately.